Our first guest, our inaugural guest, is a best-selling author, Emmy-nominated television star, business mogul, and real estate tycoon. He is also the presumptive Republican nominee for President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Welcome to the Green Line, Mr. Trump. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Sir, we know uh, you are a very hardworking man. We, we see you on TV all the time, uh, constantly campaigning and constantly trying to get this uh, nomination and then uh, to be elected. So we imagine your free time's at a minimum, so thank you for doing this today. You, you must have struggled with the decision to run for president, knowing how much it would pull you away from your, your family and your uh, different business ventures. Do you remember when you made the decision to run for president, and what were some of the factors that pushed you to embark on this historic campaign? Well, I do remember, and it's something that I've been thinking about for a number of years. I thought about doing it four years ago and didn't do it, and that was a race that should have been won, frankly. That was a race that should have been easily won, and it wasn't. And I just said this time I was looking at the Iran deal, how bad it was. I, I look at the border, how horrible it's been run from the standpoint of, of the orders given. I mean, the, the whole concept of what they're doing is so off. And I know how great the Border Patrol people are. You know, I know so many of them. I've gotten to know so many. And I see so many different things, trade deals that are so bad. Our military is in bad shape. And I just said, I've got to do it. And so I did that. And on June 16th of last year, I went down the famous escalator and here we sit. Uh, good morning, Mr. Trump. This is uh, Thane Gallagher. I'm Sean's partner, also great. a Border Patrol Thank agent. You. How are you? Good. Thank you very much. Good. Um, so, you know, sir, you've been very vocal about building a wall, which we would all agree is one of the tools necessary to secure the border. But what policy changes, you know, do you believe need to be made? And do you feel you are in a better position to make these changes since you are in contact with the border security experts or the border patrol agents who do this job every single day? Well, I do, but the big policy change is, number one, you're going to have the wall. We're going to get that wall built, and it's going to get built very quickly, and it's going to be a real wall, not the little walls. I see every once in a while we'll see a little bit of a wall that's built at a short distance, and, I mean, they could walk around it, over it. They could go any different way, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. We do. But one of the big changes I'm going to make is that I happen to have great respect for the people on the border, the people that are securing the border, but they're told they can't do it, the Border Patrol. And the Border Patrol people are incredible. And a very big policy change is let's create a border. And I've been, I mean, one of the reasons you endorsed me is because I feel strongly about that. And the Border Patrol people want to do their job. They're told to stand back and they're not allowed to do their job. And they want to do their job. It would probably be easier if they didn't have to do that. But they're, they want to do their job. They love the country, and, and uh, we're going to let them do the job the way they want to do it. That's going to be a big change because right now they're being held back. Yeah, so, you know, the current administration has pretty much decimated immigration enforcement and border security through, you know, policy changes and executive actions like DACA and DAPA. And Secretary Clinton has vowed to go even further by expanding those executive actions. You know, she's also called for increasing Syrian refugees by 500%. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on her proposals and how would a Trump administration differ? Well, I think she's a disaster. Uh, I think it's inconceivable the things that she wants to do. That's true. She wants the Syrians to pour into the country. We don't know if they're Syrians, by the way. We have no idea who they are because much of it is undocumented. A lot of these people don't have any documents. And she wants them to pour into the country. And uh, where do you see the problems uh, we'll have with that? Just take a look at Germany. Take a look at Europe. What's going on over there? And she wants to have a very weak border where people can just walk across, even weaker than it is now. So let me just say that I am the exact opposite. Sir, with the, regards to that, with uh, Germany, France, Belgium, uh, the way things are going, you, you read almost every day about attacks on the, the citizens of those countries by the, the refugees. How would you differ from, from Secretary Clinton uh, specifically in, in terms of the refugees? What would you do? Well, they just had a vicious attack last night in Germany. I saw in the news this morning, and a vicious attack where somebody just went wild and in a train and just, oh, it's just so incredible. No, I would be, number one, uh, they wouldn't be coming here. And I'm all for building a safe zone in Syria and 
getting the Gulf states to pay for it, because we don't have the money to pay for it in our country, but getting the Gulf states to pay for it. But uh, we would be very, very strict. We would be very vigilant. And frankly, the easiest way to solve the problem, and it's going to be a big problem if they keep doing this, and it already is a problem, is to just not let it happen. Our country has enough difficulty right now without letting the Syrians pour in. And again, we don't know that they're Syrians. We don't know where they come from. We have no idea. They could be ISIS. They could be who knows. But we're going to stop that immediately. Do you think it's going to take uh, another attack like 9-11 for people to wake up about border security and take it seriously? I do. I actually do. Bad things will happen. A lot of bad things will happen. There will be attacks that you wouldn't believe. There will be attacks by the people that are right now coming into our country, because I have no doubt in my mind. I mean, you look at it, they have cell phones, so they don't have money. They don't have anything. They have cell phones. Who, play, who pays their monthly charges, right? They, they have cell phones with, with uh, the flags, the ISIS flags on them. And then we're supposed to say, isn't this wonderful that we're taking them in? No, we're, uh, we're led by people that are either incompetent or they're they don't have the best interests of our country at heart. Sir, so getting back to uh, Border Patrol agents and Border Patrol security, over the, the past 20 years, we have been stopped every time we have been effective at enforcing this nation's immigration laws. Things like uh, interior city enforcement, employer sanctions for those who hire illegal aliens, and immigration checks on public transportation are, are just to name a few. What would the job of a, a Border Patrol agent look like with, with Donald Trump as president? Well, it would be much different than it is now. I mean, you would really have the tools to do the job because we have to stop it at the border. Either we have a border or we don't. And therefore, either we have a country or we don't. And uh, you would be given the tools necessary. You, you have a lot of the tools right now. The one thing you don't have is leadership at the top. They're, to they're telling you to stand back. Let everybody come in. Just let everybody alone. It's a horrible situation for our country. And uh, you will be given the tools, believe me, and the leadership. Sir, um, you know, over the past several years, law enforcement officers have been openly preyed upon by the criminal element, you know, for doing nothing more than their job. I'm sure you've seen that with the protest in New York City by the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, yet, you know, you almost hear nothing from the White House or the Department of Justice. Uh, you know, the president, uh, President Obama speaks almost glowingly of some of these uh, deceased criminals and groups such as the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, how do you view these groups? And if elected to be president, you know, how would you show your support for law enforcement in general? Well, I've always shown my support. And as you know, I called for the death penalty if a police officer is killed. And uh, I call for the death penalty of a person killing a police officer. And I've had almost every police department throughout the country is supporting Donald Trump. But I've, uh, I've, I've you know, just felt very, very strongly. These are great people. And in the same category, I mean, they're just incredible people, and they are not fairly recognized, and they're not given the credit they deserve. So we will be given that credit. Believe me, there will be a whole difference. Uh, law, and, and you'd be surprised. The people of the country appreciate Border Patrol. They appreciate the police officers. They really appreciate them. But our leadership doesn't. Our so-called leadership, because I don't even call it leadership, but our so-called leadership doesn't. That will change 100%. Sir, uh, talking about people who, who have been forgotten and uh, neglected in law enforcement, on August 3rd, uh, 2014, Border Patrol agent Javier Vega Jr. was vacationing with his family in South Texas, and he was gunned down by two previously deported illegal aliens. We believe uh, Agent Vega prevented an armed robbery of his family and that it would be classified as line of duty, yet Customs and Border Protection has refused for almost two years now to classify his death as such. Can you commit to us to rectifying this situation if you are elected president and, and getting his name on the Peace Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C.? Well, it sounds like something I would want to do. I mean, I'd want a little bit more information, but it certainly sounds like something I'd want to do. Uh, we have to take care of our brave. You know, we have certain people that step it up even beyond, and it sounds like something that I would be absolutely in favor of. Thank you for that, sir. So, Mr. Trump, uh, you know, CBP has stated that uh, Border Patrol agents are 78 to 79 percent effective at stopping illegal entries. You know, yet our own surveillance assets, uh, the agents we talk to every single day, show us that's probably less than 40 percent effective, even in our busiest sectors. 
And the overall estimate of illegal aliens in this country continues to grow. Uh, you know, you received the union's endorsement because of your pledge to work directly with those who know the border the best, which is, you know, us, the frontline agents. Right. How would you protect that pipeline of information and ensure that the truth makes it from the Border Patrol agents to the White House? Well, that's all in the leadership. That's all in the, the command. I mean, we, it's, it's, and I know exactly what you're talking about, but that all has to do with what the word is and, and what word they want to put out. Right now, the Border Patrol is not being taken care of. They're not being respected the way they should. And so much of this, we're building a wall, but so much of this can be taken care of even before the wall gets taken, you know, before the wall gets built. So when the right orders are given, I have no doubt that you folks are going to be able to do a fantastic job. I hope you agree with me. Do you agree with me on that? We do. We do. Yeah. Very Mr. much. Do you so. also agree that a wall is necessary? Oh, it, it definitely is. It uh, helps stop the traffic and helps uh, get Border Patrol agents there. Mr. Trump, we're going to take a quick break, and you're listening to The Green Line on iTunes, Spreaker, and KVOI.com. Welcome back to The Green Line. You're listening on iTunes, Spreaker, and as of today on KVO, uh, KVOI.com, The Voice, the voice 1030 a.m. in Tucson. Our guest today is the Republican, the presumptive Republican nominee for president of the United States, Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, just a, a couple more questions and then we will let you go. Okay. We know you're swamped. Uh, federal and local law enforcement often have conflicting goals when it comes to immigration enforcement. And, and nowhere is this more evident than the social experiments known as sanctuary cities, a, an idea that your opponent supports. How would you reestablish the rule of law when it comes to sanctuary cities in America? I'm totally opposed to sanctuary cities. If somebody commits a crime, they commit a crime, whether they're in sanctuary city or not in sanctuary cities, and they're not going to be protected by sanctuary cities. And we have, I have so many people that have become friends of mine, but their children have been killed. Uh, uh, Jamil Shaw is an example, is, is a great, or Kate in San Francisco. I mean, you look at what's going on in this country, and nobody even knew that San Francisco had the whole sanctuary city situation going. And now we're going to get rid of sanctuary cities. We have to. It, it just seems counter to what America is about. Either we're going to enforce the law or we're not, correct? It's amazing. And nobody even knew what a sanctuary city was, frankly, until Kate got killed. I mean, nobody even heard of them. And they're all over the place. And we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to have law and order. It's going to be proper law and order. And it's not going to be, people aren't going to be protected by sanctuary cities. It, it's unfortunate that it often takes a, a tragedy such as this to bring uh, to light the, the horrible policies that, that are, are taking place in some of these cities. Well, the Kate tragedy was horrible, and but they're all horrible. They're all of equal horror, and people come in, they're not supposed to be here, and they shoot people, and oftentimes in the back. I mean, you look at what's going on, and uh, Jamil Shaw is this wonderful young man. He was killed by an illegal immigrant, and his father became a friend of mine. I mean, these are great people, and he was getting ready to go to college, good student, great athlete. And uh, just very, very sad. So we're going to get it stopped. Sir, this show is primarily for uh, Border Patrol agents and then also for now for the public who's interested in border security. We always like to leave our guests with the, the last word. And do you have a message for the Border Patrol agents out there that are listening today? Well, I do. And I just want to thank everybody out there. The Border Patrol people are incredible. I got to know them. I've been to the area, as you know, we, we met with a whole big group. I made a speech in front of a large group of Border Patrol agents, and they were just fantastic, and they have tremendous knowledge. And I'm going to count on their knowledge, because when I'm, when I'm uh, if I'm elected, I have to say, because I have to be modest, but if and when I'm elected, uh, I'm going to be relying very much on the professionalism of the Border Patrol to tell us what to do. They know better than anybody. They know better than any consultant you can hire. They know better than anybody. So we'll be meeting and we'll be talking, but I just want to tell you, I have you 100% in my mind, and I have your back. Believe me, you are incredible people, and uh, we are with you 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald J. Trump, the presumptive Republican nominee for President of the United States. Sir, thank you for your time today. Thanks we a lot, appreciate Mr. Trump. it. Thank you both very much. Best of Great luck honor. to you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.